Hello class, we're about to start Unit 3 Fractions. It says here, two fractions have the same denominator. Add or subtract the numerators and keep the denominator the same. Reduce the answer to lowest terms and change to a mixed number if appropriate. And this is Section A, adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. So basically it comes down to this here. If the denominators are the same, what you would do with addition and subtraction, you would carry over the denominator and then add or subtract the numerator depending on what the operation is. 5 minus 1 is 4. So you would have 4 over 6 and you could simplify this by dividing the numerator and denominator by 2. So that would be 2 thirds. Here we have 7 16, 13 16, and 4 16. We can carry over the 16 and add the numerator. So that would be 24. Now, we could simplify this. 24 and 16 both has uh, 2 in common. Let's start off with 2. And that will give us 12 over 8. 12 and 8 both have 4 in common. We could divide both by 4. That would give us 3 over 2. Now, we can rewrite this as a mixed number if it was indicated that you're supposed to. I told you in a previous lesson that typically if it starts off as a mixed number or the directions tell you to write it as a mixed number or your instructor tells you as a mixed number, then you have to write it as a mixed number. We really don't have that here because they said if appropriate. We really don't need to change three halves, but I will show it just in case your instructor requires that. So we would take two divided by three. Two goes into three once. And we have a remainder of one. So our final answer, the number in front of the remainder is the whole number. The denominator stays two. And your numerator is the remainder. So you got three halves as your answer or one and one. Now we go to section B, adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Now if the fractions have different denominators, it is necessary to find equivalent fractions with the same denominator before you can add or subtract. Try to find the lowest common denominator, which is the smallest number that is a multiple of both denominators. However, if you can't find anything smaller, remember that multiplying the two denominators always gives a common denominator. If it is not the LCD, you will simp simply have to reduce more at the end. You have to multiply each fraction by a form of 1, same number top and bottom, to get equivalent fractions with the common denominator. Add or subtract the numerators, keeping the common denominator the same. Reduce and change answer to a mixed number as needed. So basically, going through this, we look at the number, the denominators 9 and 6. Now we try and find the lowest number they have in common. Because these are smaller numbers, we can figure that out to be 18. Both of them have 18 in common, and that happens to be the lowest common denominator. Now one thing you need to know about the lowest common denominator, or even a common denominator, the lowest that a, com that a denominator could be is the highest of the two numbers. Like here, the lowest that it could have been was 9. You, can got, you cannot go lower than what the highest number of these two are. So the lowest could have been 9, but we know 9 doesn't work with 6, so we have to go higher than that. So since 18 is the common denominator, we look here at 9. We ask ourselves, what times 9 is 18? And that happens to be 2. So we will multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And 9 times 2 is 18. Now when we multiply by 2 over 2, that's the same as multiplying by 1. Now we come down here to the 6. We ask ourselves what times 6 is 18? And we know it's 3. So now we multiply. Negative 5 times, well, this will be minus. 5 times 3 is 15. 6 times 3 is 18. Now we subtract. 4 minus 15 we know would give us a negative 11. And then we will bring down our 18. So this is our final answer. Now we come here, we do the same procedure here. The common denominator or least common denominator of 5 and 3 would be 15.
15. So we ask ourselves five times what is 15, it turns out to be three. So we have multiplied three times three is nine, five times three is 15. And then three times what is 15, it'll be five. So we do the numerator and denominator by five. So we will add this, two times five is 10, three times five is 15. Now we add them two together, we add 19 over 15. Now we ask ourselves here, again, if we need to change this to a mixed number, we would do that. We would take 15 into 19. 15 goes into 19 once, and we have a remainder of four. So our final answer would be one, our denominator would be 15, and our numerator would be four. So our final answer is one and four fifteenths. Now, we scroll on to the next page. Now this time we don't have the boxes all drawn, drawn out like we had on these problems here. So let's go through and solve them. We can line these up uh, vertically. So we will have three fourths minus five twelfths. Now we need to find a common denominator of four and twelve, which is twelve. Both of them have twelve in common. So we will multiply this by three over three. And since this already has a twelve in it, we could just take the minus five twelfths and put it over here. Now three times three is nine and 4 times 3 is 12. Now we subtract. We keep our denominator as 12. 9 minus 5 is 4. We can simplify this by dividing both by 4, and we will be left with 1 third. Now, we come here. The common denominator of 8 and 10 is actually 40. So we add 3 eighths plus 3 tenths. And our common denominator is 40, so we have to multiply this numerator and denominator by 5, and this numerator and denominator by 4. So this will give us 15 over 40 plus 12 over 40. Now, we would take this here, and we would take the denominator and bring it down, which is 40. Then we will add the numerators, 15 and 12 is 27. And that is our final answer, but we cannot simplify that. Now we come here, application of fraction, addition, and subtraction. It says perimeter, per, the perimeter of an object is the distance around it. You can find a perimeter by adding the lengths of all the sides. Find the perimeter of the rectangle shown below. So the perimeter, we need to know all the sides. Now, with a rectangle, we know opposite sides are equal. So this side is seven, 7 over 20 inches, and this side will be 11 over 20 inches. So now we can add up all the sides. We have perimeter is equal to 7 over 20. Now, we can write the units in at the end. 11 over 20 plus 7 over 20 plus 11 over 20. Now our denominator will remain 20. 7 plus 11 is 18, plus 7 is 25, plus 11 is 36. 36 over 20, we could simplify that. We could divide the numerator and denominator by 4, and that would give us 9 over 5. So it'd be nine fifths of an inch. And we could leave this here, or if your teacher wants you to write as a mixed number, we've had previous practice writing as a mixed number, so you can convert that. Now with number two, it says a fruit punch is comprised of four different ingredients. Apple juice makes up one fourth of the punch, grape juice one sixth of the punch, and cranberry juice one third of the punch. The rest of the punch is ginger ale. What fraction of the punch is ginger ale? So this is what we would do. Let's add up all of these fractions first, because we know this is supposed to equal one whole when you add up the ginger ale. So we look here at these three denominators, four, six, and three. They all have 12 in common. So 12 would be the common denominator. 
So we will multiply this by 3 over 3, this 1 6 by 2 over 2, and 1 3rd by 4 over 4. So this will give us 3 twelfths, this will give us 2 twelfths, and finally this will give us 4 twelfths. Now we will add all these together. This will give us 9 over 12. Okay, now, we have 9 twelfths. Remember, we're trying to get this to be one whole. So what we would do is this. We would take 1 minus 9 twelfths, and we would make this 1 12 over 12, so they could have the same denominator. And when we subtract this, this is how much the ginger ale would be, because that's the only ingredient missing. So this will give us 3 twelfths, and we can simplify that. We can divide both by 3, and our final answer would be 1 fourth. That's how much ginger ale is in the punch. Now we come to section D, adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Okay, now, we're adding and subtracting mixed numbers. It comes down to this here. We know we would do the fractions the same, like they have to have the same denominator and everything, but we have to add or subtract the uh, whole numbers as well. So we will line this up vertically. Now the common denominator of 5 and 2 is 10. So we know we'll multiply this by 2 over 2 and this fraction by 5 over 5. So now this will leave us with 14 and 4 tenths plus, this would be 27 and 5 tenths. So now we will add this 4 tenths and 5 tenths is 9 tenths. And 14 plus 27 is 41. So that is our final answer. Now we come here to the next problem. And we line it up the same. 33 and 5 six plus 49 and two-thirds. The common denominator of 6 and 3 is 6, so we will multiply this bottom fraction by 2 over 2. And since the top fraction already has 6 as the denominator, we could just carry that over. So we have 33 and 5, 6, plus 49 and 4, 6. So now, 5, 6, and 4, 6 is 9, 6. And 33 and 49 is actually 82. Now, if we look here, we notice that this is an improper fraction, so we need to change this to a mixed number. Now, we could go off to the side and do that. But what I would first suggest is we simplify this to make it a little easier. So we divide both by 3, and that will give us 3 halves. So we'll take 2 and a 3 goes once, and we have a remainder of one. So this will give us one and one half. So this is how we would do it. We would add this one to the 82, which would make it 83, and carry the one half over, and we're done. Okay, now, we come here to these last two problems. In class, I took the liberty to write this out. Both of these have the same sign, so you know you will end up adding them together and carrying the sign, but they have to have the same denominator. So the common denominator of 6 and 4 is 12, so I'll multiply the top um, problem here by 2 over 2 and the bottom by 3 over 3, and that gave us negative 50 and 10 twelfths and negative 22 and 3 twelfths. So this would be negative 72 and 13 twelfths. So we have to go off to the side. This will give us a mixed number. 12 goes into 13 once, and we have a remainder of 1. So this would be 1 and 1 12. So now we know that this is negative, so we still would add it to this negative 72, which would make it a negative 73, and then 1 12. And that is the final answer.